Hey everybody, before we get started um, with the episode with the guest Ian from 13 Pod, which was a lot of fun, um, we wanted to do our Patreon shoutouts and then also um, talk about some cool shit. Uh, so first off in our haints, we have Corey and Lane of New World Witchery, Melissa D, Chris of Pagan Ironworks, Ashley C, Amanda F, Mary, Allison, Aura, Shannon, Lilith, Liz, Amanda of Bell Fire Apothecary, Salvo Sea Witch, Lorraine, Erica and Leona of Night Guys Podcast, Jason and Melanie of Spooky Charlotte, Devin, Katie, Bex, and Joanna. And on the Poltergeist here, we have Rachel the Pickety Witch, Temple, Luna, Heather, Joanne, Avael, Jessica, Zach, Tiffany, Stephen, The Church Grim, Stephanie, Emily, Jen, Wednesday, Mina, Ashley of Cryptid Coven Creations, and Katrina of Resilience Wellness and Therapy. And then Bailey and Britt. Uh, so what we really wanted to talk about um, before we get started and after the shout outs, because we didn't make our guests listen to us ramble, uh, trying to figure out what we're talking about, but our merch. Oh, yeah. Um, if you haven't seen, because some people might listen that don't follow us on Instagram, you should, but we have merch now. And it's real cute. Yeah, we have shirts, tank tops, hoodies, cups. No, not cups, mugs. Mugs. Uh, totes. Yes. Bitches love totes. And so useful for the farmer's market. Yeah, and they come in different, like the shirts come in different colors, like uh, black. Uh, Other black? Yes, lighter black. Or gray, <laughs> uh, purple, um, olive, some different colors. There's some that we did not include because we don't want people walking around in a bright red hex file shirt. Because red is gross. Yeah, we can't do it. But um, you can find that we have two shops. We have a Teespring, uh, which has the totes and mugs on it because uh, we didn't like the Threadless shops ones. But we also have <laughs> a Threadless shop, which has better apparel, not quality wise, because both quality is really good, it seems like. Um, but I liked their color options more, uh, on Threadless. They have more of the purples and heathered colors and stuff. So check those out. The link is in the bio of our Instagram or Twitter. Um, and we'll put a link in this episode so you can find it, but, um, or just search us on those. I think it shows up, but not only that, we also have pins now. Yeah. Um, the pins are not on there. The pins right now we don't have a site for, so you have to DM us. You can email us at hexfilespod at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at hexfilespod or follow us on Instagram at hexfilespod or on uh, TikTok at hexfilespod. We just can't message on there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but they're cool. They're like an inch and a half. They're um, soft enamel, so they, you know, they're like got the metal frame and stuff, but they glow in the dark. They're our logo, which had to be tweaked a little bit, but um, you'll get the idea. And I think the UFO, all the good stuff glows, and our name glows. They're really detailed and really cool for the size. Yeah, there was a lot of work that went into making those. Yeah, so if you want one, they're only 13 bucks right now, plus yeah. shipping. And to uh, celebrate our pins, we have a very limited amount that we're going to do with free stickers. Ah, uh, yes. And that's like a $4 value or $5. Depends on the sticker. Absolutely free. Yeah. Call now. <laughs> and um, But no, we're really excited about the pins. This is a very small, we sold a few. This is a very small run of them to see how they do. So if you want a pin, you should probably jump on them now. And uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely get more made in the future. But it's a little bit of a turnaround yeah. time on those. So, Lots um, of hands on those. Yeah. So And then they didn't come out right the first time. Uh, there was a mix up with the colors and what's supposed to glow and what's not. Those might, we have those, we might sell for a discounted price down the road. But right now we're going to sell the really nice, cool ones. That we're proud of. That we're proud of, yeah. And you should be proud of. Yeah. So there's pictures of them on our Instagram page you can go look at. So you know what we're talking about. But you should buy them. Yeah, or two. Yeah, and help fund um, this and our adventures. Yeah. So with that being said... Enjoy the show. Enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I'm Josh. And I'm Tamara. And this is uh, Hex Files. And we're joined today by Ian of 13, which is a, a horror podcast. Um, 
and uh, welcome, Ian. We're glad to have you, finally. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me on. Uh, so can you tell our listeners, if they don't know about your show, like kind of what um, the best way you guys describe it? Yeah, we are. Um, we describe it as a horror fiction podcast, although a lot of it's more suspense, spooky, eerie. We don't do a lot of outright jump scares or, or stuff like that. It's really atmospheric, slow burn, feature link stories. They're fully produced with music behind them, sound design. It's kind of like movies for your ears. That yeah. is an amazing description because that's exactly what I would say. Oh, cool. Yeah, we listened to, um, what was the one we were listening to today? The Long Weekend? Yes. Uh, and we were like, oh yeah. We were feeling attacked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the gin. I may or may not have gone to buy gin. <laughs> you did. I did. <laughs> After your appointment, you bought some gin. Yes. Um, but yeah, we. I was like, oh, wow, this is, there's a lot of production that goes into this. There's sound effects, there's music, there's a whole vibe. Um, it's very layered. It's like, um, it's a real treat. You can, it builds an environment, I think. That's a really cool episode to come in on too, because it's, a fir- it's, it's the first one that was written by our music guy, Caleb. And it was the first one directed by Liz, who is our sound design person. So you can really hear the sound people taking over in that one and really taking it in some cool directions. They really do flex, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is our time to shine. Um, so uh, you, it, it releases, what, the 13th of every month? Yeah, that's the whole thing. It's uh, 13. We release on the 13th of the month um unless the 13th falls on a weekend because we found out that no one listens on weekends interestingly yeah so um we wanted to to drop the episodes when it was convenient for people to hear them so if it's on the third if the 13th is a saturday or sunday we drop it on monday um so uh but yeah most of the time it's on the 13th yeah when you look at um the podcast like suggestions and analytics um weekends are not good um Mondays are good we're still trying to play around with my other podcast cursed releases on Fridays and we were trying that we were juggling with Tuesdays that didn't seem Wednesdays and then we released we had to release late due to family being in town mm. and we released it on Thursday and we're like actually that had some good numbers so we're now we're gonna play around with release <laughs> on Thursday I think our people Thursday's that good. I think people that listen to us are like are used to it by now, but I don't know if we could get the Monday going. Like, that's kind of yeah, a hard Tuesdays thing. Tuesdays and Wednesdays are all saturated because Wondery drops everything on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, so everyone gets yeah. bombarded with their Wondery podcasts. And yeah, fun fact: the first episode of Curse released on the thirteenth. Friday the 13th. did it. Yes. Yeah. Oh wow. And then oh. ours released our first solo because uh, this show started as a bonus in between the bi-weekly cursed episodes as a little okay. short, like get drunk, read articles. And um, we uh, haven't recorded in a minute, it feels like, because we had gotten caught up a little bit. And then we had so many guests that we were like scheduling them out. So now it's like, oh shit, like we finally got kind of caught up. And then family came into town and we had to take a little break because they extended their stays and they were important people to see. So, um, but yeah, we... Um, started on the 13th too Sep- i think the same like september the 13th maybe wasn't a friday for us but it was for curse okay um so yeah we 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 respect the 13th day of the yes. month <laughs> nice we thought we, we try and do something special when it's a friday the 13th and fun fact for whatever reason we were certain that september was a friday the 13th for months and it wasn't Oh no. So we had a big two part episode planned. And then, like, someone looked at a calendar like two weeks beforehand after it's already off to music and, and we don't have time for a backup episode. And we were like, well, shit. Um, so <laughs> we, we, we dropped our big special Friday the 13th episode on just a normal, <laughs> normal, a, a nor- normal, non unlucky day. <laughs> Yeah. Friday the thirteenth is really what you make it, though. It's like Christmas; it's made up. I think yeah. you're right. The Friday the thirteenth is always in your heart. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
so you've got you guys been around i mean you've got a pretty big crew right um you've got a not just like us who you show up drunk all the time and then i'm the one editing to life yeah (laughs) we've got a good sized crew we we started we did a we did a show before this called olive hill and um it's a short seven episode um serial and uh our our team i guess really developed in that show i met brooke who is um there's four of us that make up the core i guess group but then we've got a music person we've got a visual person we've got um um a few other people that work with us too and um um oh yeah me and Brooke met like six or seven years ago on a different project and then we started Olive Hill we brought in Liz and Bridget who are the other two of the the core four group of us and um yeah that's what carried on to to 13. Your production your production value is amazing I can tell that a lot of people really put their worth into it unlike yeah us. it's right. <laughs> well it's it's pretty cool you know it's especially if it's if it's your first try i think you get to you get to play around with different things and, and learn different stuff we got to do that with olive hill um the production value of olive hill is good but it's not what 13 is because we, we can listen back to that story and we can hear a lot of things that if we could go back and we, you know knowing what you know now you can do it better um back then we we tortured liz with massive hours long files because we thought it was best to keep everything just in case and um she she relieved us of that idea really quickly oh she um, hated you is what you mean she hated you that. she hated you for that <laughs> she hated so yeah it, like, even even today though you know as, as good as 13 sounds like really liz is our we hand Liz a bag of shit and she makes it come, makes it sound great. Um, she, she does whatever she does with it. Um, she's kind of magical. Oh, but, sure. um, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it, it's cool. To, it's cool to have a first project to really play around with and, and hone your sound, I guess. Yeah. Um, I would. I've never. I'm not even familiar with Olive Hill. It's something we'll have to check out. Oh, it's good. It's, it's much. It's 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 much more obscure than than even thirteen. Thirteen is kind of obscure, but Olive Hill is very we, deep in the uh, podcast algorithm. I can't even say that I was. I've listened to podcasts, but I usually stick to like the witchcraft ones or um, kind of like the true crime. But I never listened to like horror fiction. And old gods kind of changed that. Um, and, I, and I'm a huge horror fan. I just never got into the podcast uh, side of that. And which I don't know. I think that's how we connected is we had old gods on and they were sharing us and stuff. And um, I think that was like, hey, if you guys want to ever do something or check us out. And uh, yeah, it's a whole new world to me that old gods kind of did that I wasn't familiar with. Uh, I knew it existed, but, you know, sometimes, I I mean, everybody was like, oh, you should listen to Night Vale and all this stuff. And I never, never jumped in. But um, yeah, I I like the, um, I want to say we're we're really big into lore. And I know that's not fiction, but kind of the like, the same kind of feel, because they have so much production put into it. And And um, he's a great storyteller, you know, so like, even Absolutely. though it's not fiction, it feels like you're immersed in a really cool story, you know? Yeah, now you you guys have, and I'm just going to keep saying you guys for the team, but um, four, four. It, it, you <laughs> have different writers. Uh, how do you go about kind of, do you assign things or does somebody have a good story and they work on, they're like, oh, me next. Um like when you when you come up with your episodes and stuff yeah it's more the um more the latter I guess I I did most of the writing especially early on mostly because I just had a big backlog of stories yeah um that uh were either mostly formed or 
or or, or in some sense ready to go. But um, Bridget has written for us. Um, Brooke has a couple of episodes she's working on, and um, uh, yeah, the the long weekend most recent one that we aired was uh, our sound guy actually, and we take submissions too. We've got um, we're taking a break from writing and and uh the writing is the longest part um mm -hmm. and uh, uh we're taking a break from that and working on yet another project um and yeah. letting our submissions kind of uh take over for for a few months while we pour into that one and then we're gonna pull back out of that and and get a lot more 13 done before we dive back into it again and kind of do it in spurts but um yeah, we, we, it comes from a lot of different places. What You were saying you had another project that you were working on or you just like another? Yeah, it's, a, it's, another, um, it's another podcast project. I can't really talk about it, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, oh, my God, but, we don't have um, a security clearance to hear about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just us, right? Nobody's listening, right? It's just us. Right. Yeah. Yeah, just, I, just I talking. I can almost promise you that nobody is listening. <laughs> um one day no um it's uh it, it's it's nice because i guess obviously there's a um with a fan base there's a like we found that people obviously the witchcraft community likes paranormal shit and likes horror shit and likes all this so um we actually when i started this uh side project as bonus stories it was literally just like i want to read witchcraft news or i want to read like interesting news and then it turned to like what if we got drunk and read like stupid cryptid supernatural articles and then it turned into like let's talk about the actual things we investigate so it, it feels like with hex files we've gotten in this weird spot where it's like our last episode with loring was very similar to how we started out just being drunk and talking shit about like these people um like post malone being at skinwalker ranch we're like what the hell <laughs> but then like the episode before that is like a two part of us going to search for bigfoot so i don't know we're we're kind of like in that stretch of our we don't have another investigation till july and till then we're like oh we'll fill it with we've got guests to to get to um basically we're grown-ups and we can do whatever we want right. so there yeah but the the that, whole point I'm, of that was I'm jealous Awesome. <laughs> but the whole point of that was to circle around to like we didn't realize how many like fans carried over and how many um kind of follow fall in that genre of like you know old gods and um lore and listening to I mean lore you you know everybody listens to lore I feel like um but it's 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 funny because it's like even though you're in your own little like niche of like horror fiction and then you've got the witchcraft and like paranormal investigation like there's so much crossover um it's community and in these times i think that's really heartwarming that there is a community there even if you can't feel or see them they're there true and we're also talking about people from appalachia which i believe you guys you said you were out of kentucky we had we were appalachian adjacent yeah we're in lexington um we are right now, yeah. but <laughs> I mean, so, for real though, Appalachian adjacent, you don't sound Southern at all. I know it's so <laughs> weird. I've, I've sounded like this my entire life, but how? Um, I have no idea. Um, I know some people like try to lose their accents. That's not what I did. I had a, I had a teacher in school that thought I was from like Ohio um which I don't think I sound like I'm from Ohio either I don't know what she was talking about but <laughs> um but uh, yeah I don't I don't sound like I'm from rural Kentucky I'm not from Lexington I'm from um a town about 30 minutes east of here Is yeah your, and I, yeah you're rural North Carolina and you North sound Carolina, like it yes I do um and I tried to lose my accent for a long time too and it just became really weird and I'm just embracing it now right Bridget is from Whitesburg Kentucky right on the river between Virginia and where where Steve and Cam are from from Old Gods um 
there one county over from where Bridget's from. And she sounds a lot like you, Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> Kentucky, okay, I'll take it. Yeah, you do like but, their bourbon. Yeah, it, <laughs> it probably just has worked its way into my genetic code at this point. I'm drinking Woodford right now, if, that's, yes. uh, if that helps. Yeah. Yeah, we're drink well, we did make French 75s because um we're I French. <laughs> no. Nice. Classic Appalachian drink. But um <laughs> it was just the Prosecco and then it turned into gin and now it's a whole thing. But um And it's your fault, sir. Yeah, the long weekend we started listening to earlier today and all this gin talk were like, who? What? <laughs> I was feeling very attacked through the intro of that. Yeah, you'll have to, um, uh, I forget his name. What did you say his name was? I can, I can get Caleb on the phone if we need Caleb. to talk it out. I was thinking, uh, <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say, but I was like, yeah, like whatever he was pulling from. That <laughs> it's the same strings I'm made out of. Oh, chain <laughs> you say? Um, trouble sleeping? Uh, <laughs> Overly yeah. productive during the day and a secret alcoholic at night. Well, you know, like, so horror has like they're 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 tropes but they're tropes for a reason right and yeah. one of them is you know there's a secret there's someone who isn't quite who they think they are it's not always you know malicious it's you know maybe there's a little bit of an alcohol problem that you mask during the day um there's that insomnia right it gives you that opportunity for like eerie um kind of blue light of the moon through the window kind of scenes and um um i don't know it's all there for a reason i think um but no you're yeah you're picking up on it you're like you're built for this <laughs> <laughs> so when he wrote something about like i hate to go to sleep because when i go to sleep i know that the part of me that my day has taken i won't get back mm. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, my guts! Deep in my <laughs> guts." Okay. Can I say too? Like, that's one thing that I think, if I can kind of like toot our own horn a little bit, I think that's mm -hmm. something that we do. There are a lot of podcasts that are scarier than us, right? Um, but something I think that we do really well is that you walk away from one of our episodes and you feel every emotion. Um, you know, you, you feel uh, um, a little scared, maybe a little anxious throughout the thing, but you're probably also going to feel nostalgic. You're going to feel melancholy. You're going to have some heartwarming moments in there. Like we really try and make it a full rounded story. Which, I mean, as somebody who's watched horror their entire life um, from Halloween and all the 80s slasher films to uh, reading Stephen King to doing all this shit um, like there's I mean there's easy scares there's creepy but when you get to a certain point like the unsettling and like the psychological and it's not just that like oh that surface level like psychological but those little tiny like nods to things I think we talked about it with old gods like one of my favorite stories by Stephen King is Pet Cemetery because Nothing really mm. scary happens. It's all like that psychological feeling and anxiety that you build the whole time of like, I would totally do that. I know I would do that. And I would like, I know it would go bad, but I would still do it. And it's like mm -hmm. that mental shit that just picks away at you is scarier. And I think old gods have those like episodes that do that. Um, oh man, they, they I, I can't say enough. <laughs> Something happens in my soul when that music drops at the end of an old guy's right. episode. Oh, Those like yes. little bow. And that's not to, bow, yeah, right. And that's oh not to like, take away from your thing, but like the idea of horror in like, yeah, I can read a creepy pasta all day long and it it's like, oh man, that was crazy. But it doesn't stick with me. But you know, you build something and it and it sticks with you because you do tug at those little. Uh, mental and psychological and emotional strings um, that people relate to and it's like oh shit well, the scariest and you're thing sucked you'll in. ever face is yourself who told you that <laughs> <laughs> myself yes something that someone someone wrote into us and I think that I'm, I'm just now putting this together now but maybe the reason that works so well is because something will happen in your life the the 
the worst kept secret for for writers is that whatever you're feeling isn't special, right? Um, if you're feeling something, millions and millions of other people are also feeling that thing, and you have to find those people. And that's your audience. Um, but you're not doing anything unique. So people have written us and been like, oh man, I did this thing. And it reminded me of that exact scene in that episode. And I think that might be why some of it's so powerful because it is just kind of down to earth. It's not fantastical. Yeah, it's not crazy like, oh, there's a um, burned up person chasing you in your nightmares. Like, which is, it, which can be, can be cool, right? Yeah, of uh, course. Yeah, but, but yeah, that's, that's not what we do. And, and I think that's what, what Stephen can do so well too like even though they set their stuff in the dis not that distant past but outside of our lifetimes um it's still like there's longing there's lost love there's you know wanting to become something better like all that stuff is in there and you really you really relate to it and the thing that we get so d disconnected from is like the struggle of man and nature we think that we have that so conquered and so mastered, but it's never actually gone. That's, that's Appalachian horror right there. <laughs> that is. That is. That's some good stuff. Now, for people who have just turned on to your uh, podcast in a very recent or a very short time period, um, we've not gotten through much of it, but are there a lot of stories that pull from Appalachia and kind of which... I, by honorary like the south kind of mentality is like does that make sense because i know kentucky yeah is kind of the south but it depends but like it depends on who you ask and where kentucky you are in the state yeah. shit. it is its own shit but like when you talk about com stacked up to the rest of the country like like what is there a part of kentucky and this is getting to a whole other thing like is there a part that like i mean you're not midwestern vibe you're not northern vibe like I mean, but Appalachia is its own thing, South or not, like, yeah. mm -hmm. but then there are very different sides of Appalachia. I mean, the Appalachian Trail goes a far, far piece, but yeah. it's very different when you get closer to the Pittsburgh southern. is Appalachian. And so is like, you know, tiny haulers, you know, like all that stuff is Appalachia. Right. Oh, you said tiny haulers. I heard it a little bit there when you said it. <laughs> Did you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. It, yeah. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, we just, you know, it's kind of, I, my family's from, my grandmother's side is from Ohio and my grandfather's side is from California, but my mom and all that's from California and Oregon. And then they moved here. So I was born in um, the foothills and grew up all around here and raised by people that didn't have accents and I tried not to pick that up because I broke him to me <laughs> to me it was like okay this is not my family doesn't sound like this I don't want to sound like this and you know part of that is the the issue with Appalachia that we talked about where you know it's it's looked down upon on purpose I mean it, it's a it's a long-standing history of mm -hmm. being the butt of a joke and all that with rednecks and hillbillies and all this a lot of people had a lot of money to make off of making us feel like we weren't good yeah and they yeah. still make that money yeah and they get elected president because of it um but you know it's it's like within the recent years you start to think like you know what fuck that and it's kind of nice, like we, we've talked about before, seeing this resurgence of kind of focus and attention on Appalachia from outside of Appalachia and people taking pride in it. Um, and there's a lot of, um, there, it, it is the Bible Belt down here too. <laughs> and so there's a lot of like the religious stuff and um, trying to break through that. And, and then you have somewhere where right now we live in Charlotte so we're Appalachia adjacent. Adjacent, adjacent. Adjacent, adjacent, yes. But, um, you know, I think we're going back tomorrow. So um, yes. somewhere close enough. Yes, ma'am. Let those heels <laughs> hit my feet. But, um, yeah, so what, um, that's one thing we had talked about before having you on is that that feeling that you get here and how it might inspire kind of like your stories of, um horror or like what you what you put into your show and I guess we kind of touched on it with the emotional and kind of like the 
the tug of the things that freak people out because they're so personal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, um, so the, the stories that we write um, are all m- uh, mostly take place in Kentucky, not by, you know, we're not trying to be like big Kentucky boosters or, or, you know, do like the whole Stephen King with Maine thing. It's just where oh, we know, yeah. you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of the state, you know, like, like you all touched on, um, the Northern counties are basically Cincinnati suburbs. Louisville is its own thing. Lexington is its own thing. And then you've got Appalachia out East and you've got like Western Kentucky, which is very Midwestern. Um, and then Southern oh, yeah. South Central. Ken- yeah. And then you've got like South Central Kentucky, which feels, uh, that's, that's where it feels Southern, you know? So there's a lot of different, there's a lot of different settings that, and we're all from different parts of the state too. That, that kind of plays into it too. I'm from right here around Lexington, central Kentucky. Liz is more Southern Kentucky. Bridget is um, as far East as you can get in Kentucky. And Brooke is from far Western Kentucky. So we draw on a lot of it, but we do a lot in Louisville just because Louisville is, uh, um, it's a bigger, older city, you know? So there's like lots of cool settings, haunted type vibes there. Um, we do a lot of just unnamed rural or small townish Kentucky. And we do a lot of uh, uh, Appalachian. We, we have a couple of stories that are set in the mountains and then a couple others where it's people who have left the mountains um as your main character and there's that sort of um push and pull uh vibe going on uh within that character you know um yeah did did i ramble there did i stop looking at me and talking about me without saying my name please (laughs) (laughs) but i like how you uh you try to keep it like and not just because of what you know but like keep it local and it kind of builds this um you know, feeling and it, uh, you know, you guys seem to be doing pretty well. And it's like, you think, well, we're sharing this, like our part of Kentucky and our reality of Kentucky and the stories that, you know, are, are created in our heads. Like you're, you share it with such a big audience. And I look at like our podcast uh, info and we see people that listen from Australia or Canada and. Oh, I know. Isn't that Canada- cool? Yeah. And you're like, god you're like what do y'all think about when you hear us talk about like the shit like we talk about these backwood haulers and drinking bourbon and all this shit and it's like like are we a case study like what (laughs) (laughs) that's fun i'm ready to represent no i love it i love it that people like are interested and we have a consistent number and it's slowly growing and it's like people are interested in not only what we do but like most of our investigations happen in appalachia um we've not even gone outside that scope or had to at this point. Um, And I think our investigation in July is in like Indiana, Ohio border. So we're like, we're going to drive through Kentucky. I know you want to do the bourbon trail. We're going to drink a lot of bourbon on the way. If you you have recommendations, let me know. I do. I have a (laughs) lot. Oh God. So quick pause. Tell me all about that. Side note, tell us about Kentucky bourbon. All right, so my my all my favorite go to bourbon, and this isn't like because it's the nice, it's just the best like shelf bourbon is Bullet. I think Same. it's just the right bite, good flavor, and it's not uh, that yeah. expensive. And it's like yeah, the rye, especially. I mean, it and it goes a long way. Can't chug it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fan of um, um, the Wild Turkey Distillery. is a great one to stop at. Because they, you know, they have like the 101 and all that stuff, but um, like the classic wild turkey, but they do amazing like infused bourbons, Um, the honey one, and um, there's an apple one that are just like, they're dangerous because like it's, it's real bourbon, but it doesn't bite like it. So yeah, yeah, (laughs) you you can get carried away quick because you know, it doesn't feel like you're drinking bourbon. We're not going to show up to the investigation and they'll be like 
what the fuck? <laughs> Why isn't Hex Files here? And it's like, they got stopped and they got stuck in Kentucky. Tomorrow's got the shakes. <laughs> Look, if y'all need a crash, you know, one of us can put you up. It's fine. We got you. <laughs> I'm going to be like, Ian, this is your fault. <laughs> I went to the wild turkey place and I'm a wild turkey now. I am a wild turkey. <laughs> Which, I mean, it's a, I don't even remember, you probably know better than I do about what uh, is on the bourbon trail. Um, oh, there's so many. There's like that. That'll be a, um, that'll be an entire oh, separate yeah. trip, of course, but we can't not stop it. At least one of them. We need to investigate them. You know, they're haunted. Yeah. You know, the warehouses are haunted. They got spirits. It's a plenty. Uh, I see what he did. Yeah. I hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yes, we, um, you're a bigger bourbon. Well, I mean, I've, I drink plenty of bourbon, but, um, you've got, what's your, what's your favorite now? Is it the Woodford or? I'm a poor. Yes, I'm aware. Um, but Bullet is my absolute go-to. I like the rye a whole lot. I'm big into rye. I know that's not exactly bourbon, but. I'm not a stickler. Yeah um woodford is an amazing one that was like my introduction um got some buffalo trace buffalo trace is good buffalo trace is good because it's super hard to come by here oh it is oh, very hard to come by I oh know. yeah it's, it's like, like specialty here yeah they'll charge a premium for buffalo trace here oh wow yeah mm-hmm. look at i right um <laughs> so stock up right <laughs> Uh, like whistle pig um blanton's the big names i guess blanton's is also buffalo trace they oh. make like they make like 10 of them yeah that distillery is massive it's huge what's the one with roses what's the oh four roses oh, four okay. roses yeah i yeah. wanted to say that but like i didn't know if that was the right i love i want to like four roses so much like I, I love their bottles. I love the the name. Just sounds sounds awesome, but I don't like it that much. I don't know why. It's hot. It's hot. Like it doesn't. <laughs> it is a little hot. Yeah. yeah. Like it burns more than it like than it should for what it is. Yeah. Yeah. The payback uh, isn't equivalent. Yeah, that's it. Um, there's one in Lexington. I don't know. I don't know if it's actually on the trail. It's called Town Branch. It's named after the creek that it's next to, where they get the water, and um, it's it's fantastic. I it's it's not very well known, but I love it. Take it's notes. a little bit more expensive, so I don't get it that often. But first off, those can be the bet like our the gin that we found um, here, and the reason we picked it up is like I didn't even know anything about it, but it looks really cool. It's in like a pottery like like jug. a ceramic vessel. Yeah. And it's like, okay. it's called Sutler's. It's out of Winston-Salem. So maybe two hours from us. And I'm, I'm tasting it and I'm like, God, there's like, I feel like there's lavender in this. I'm getting notes of that, which, you know, gin's come a long way. Like it, you know, gin used to be like three types and it was either like pine tree or less pine tree. And now <laughs> it's like- Makes me think about those at TikTok. Um, I've got three styles and that's it. A right. homeless man, 12 year old <laughs> boy and a hooker. <laughs> right. Um, but- then they were like, oh yeah, we distill it with lavender and stuff. And it's, you cannot find it everywhere. It's only in a couple. And we're like so close to Winston-Salem and there's such a small operation. And like in our experience, it's those little distilleries that like, it's where it's at. It's the same as breweries. I mean, like there's somebody somewhere putting their whole heart and soul into something. And I feel like you can spend a little bit, I don't, there's nothing wrong with the bigger ones, but you can spend a little bit more time, I guess, with it and I don't know. So it's like art, you know, like just because it's a big name and, it ex- and it's expensive doesn't mean that the quality is any different. So we need to find yeah. this. Um, what Creek? What is it? Uh, Town Branch. Tra- Town, Town Branch. Branch Creek. No. <laughs> yeah. I opened for something else too. It's, um, it's called Fresh Bourbon, which is a oxymoron a little bit, but oh. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's the first black owned bourbon ever. Um, distillery opening up here uh in lexington like soon ish i think they're already they're bottling it somewhere whenever you start a new distillery apparently you bottle it somewhere else like you rent out space 
hmm. because it has to sit for so long. Right. Um, so they're like doing that right now and, and they're building their distillery like just outside of downtown Lexington. So it's not like most of them are kind of rural, you know, and this one, like there's high rises like right there near you and it's in the middle of everything. So it's going to be pretty cool. That sounds exciting. It does. Uh, yeah, we want to hit up as many as we can and actually do like a whole trail but it won't be on this trip, but we'll have to go. Yeah. For as um, much as I drink, you would think that I could hit more, but I can't hit that many. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I feel like you would get like, if you did that many at one time, I feel like you would get a burnout a little bit. Yeah. Like palate numbness. Yeah. Kind of like when you do it with breweries, there's Charlotte has, so I'm, I mean, I'm sure most big cities do, but we have so many and they all have like specialize in IPAs and we love our yeah, adjuncts in North IPA. Carolina. Yeah. And it's just <laughs> one after the other is like, yeah, but then when you find a good one, like, and that's what we talked about with old gods is like burial out of Asheville knows what the fuck they're doing. And they're coming to Charlotte. Yes, and we're excited about Ooh. that. Um, but yeah, because I mean, even from Asheville, like their shit is expensive to get here in cans. Um, but yeah. So we'll have to do all of that and plan a whole trip. We'll have to go to Hellier. Um, Hellier. It's, it's somewhere along there. We'll find goblins. We'll drink bourbon with them. <laughs> um, <laughs> Zero stars, no goblins. Yeah, but five stars because uh, hundreds of bourbons. Yeah. <laughs> Don't rule out the goblins. I mean, like, you never know. Right. So Ian, tell me what's your favorite episode that you've written? Like, what is your piece that you're the most proud of? Yeah, I was going to ask that too. Like, oh the- man, I've got, I've got a couple. So the first one, the first episode is called House in the Highlands. Um, and it's a, uh, oh, you guys will love this. It's a, it's a, a paranormal investigating team um, that have uh, come back to Louisville to investigate this uh um haunted house um and uh um it kind of gets the the narrator has his own like haunted past kind of stuff going on too um i love the story but it was our first one and it was my first time narrating a story and i think i sound like absolute garbage um so it's like the worst narrating but one of my favorite stories so i have mixed feelings about it um well i think your best is amazing oh but it was so yeah like but i was like self-conscious it's my first time i'm 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 a i'm an introverted person i'm a writer we don't like word you know stuff um <laughs> we don't like stuff and to buy we stuff, don't like you mean people? we don't like things um i know i don't yeah i don't either so <laughs> i like we, my things <laughs> but yeah we were um uh, i was getting acclimated to the microphone it's not my best work um voice wise but I, i'm really proud of that story i love it a lot i think our best episode um for uh um for narration and story combined is the it's a two-parter called the meeting house it's the one that we did in september that we thought it was friday the 13th <laughs> um it's a uh, it's a seminary student who gets a an internship in a city that is not named but loosely based off of cincinnati and um it's an old haunted church um with uh uh, lots of spooky um, atmospherics, and uh, it's 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 got some it's got some sexy bits in it too. It's fun. It's a good ride. It sounds like that's the gamut of humanness, right? But what's your mom and them think? No, <laughs> <laughs> my mom doesn't know about the show actually. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, um, um we've never had like the conversation about me not being religious anymore happy mother's and day thank you happy mother's <laughs> day <laughs> um so uh uh there's a lot of that in the um in the show too a lot of um um 
religious uh, drifting, I guess. Well, I think so, that's a big uh, part of like living in the in Appalachia, and because your roots are so tied to that shit. But mm-hmm. like you've moved, your brain has moved past it, if well, you yeah, will. Yeah, we get so indoctrinated that sometimes it's hard to break out of that evangelical mindset because those yeah. have been like bred like engraved into your being your entire life sometimes it's a little bit hard to see that that's not the absolute truth yeah and here you have to like come out twice you know because it's like you have to come out like i'm not christian yeah and then you're like oh also it gets better (laughs) Um, (laughs) wait there's more yeah wait there's more you did this to me. <laughs> I do stuff with girls. <laughs> it better not be uh, Sally Mae up the street. I knew y'all two were playing too close when you were young. But, uh, <laughs> but no, it's hard here. It's hard being, my, I don't know. I'm sure most of my family doesn't even know what the fuck I do. My mom is a Patreon, <laughs> is a patron, but bless her. Nice. It's because she's like, oh, I like hearing about this stuff. Um, and she knows and other people know and it's funny because like um, I don't know that they they listen and my grandmother's like oh you have to tell me about your podcast it's like you wouldn't like it Um, (laughs) it's fine when you go to the casino and you want me to like put some um, uh, crown of success oil on your on your money but um, do you really want to hear those episodes I don't think so (laughs) But I think they're they're proud-ish. They think they are. That's the plight of the <laughs> witch, though. Nobody loves the witch until they need the witch. Word. Or the, yeah. the gays. Yeah. Um, when you need your fucking living room redone. <laughs> or need to learn how to talk to your 27-year-old son. That's when the gays. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that's when. But, um, yeah, it's hard because then, like, with our content, I don't always tell people that I, like work with i mean you know it's like you kind of like oh my coworkers don't know absolutely not uh, oh my god do we, you mind saying what your day job is um i'm uh i do operations management at a cleaning company nice so yeah but all my coworkers, i love my coworkers, but they're like they're the biggest bros you know oh, you know yeah and like they're, they're really they, they really are they're they really are great like I, I I like working there, um, but no, I will never tell them about that show. No. The other day, I came back from break, and the conversation that my coworkers were having—I swear to God, I could not have scripted this. They said, "Tamara, do you have any ghost stories?" And Ooh. I felt like I was being set up. I was like, "No." no what is a ghost I don't know what are you talking about (laughs) I need some background information who's listening is this conversation being recorded (laughs) I thought I was gonna get I thought they were gonna find out because there's um uh there's a radio show here called Kentucky Sports Radio and one of the guys on that show mentioned our show oh and uh I'm certain that all three of my coworkers here in the office um listen to ksr and um when that happened i was like well shit at least one of them is gonna go like find the show and hear my voice on the credits and be like well yeah but it didn't if, if they did they haven't told me so and maybe they'll think you're like that happened with me at my my newer job was um like it's obviously the stickers on my car but it's like <laughs> oh i'll have to check that out and it's like yeah you do that and then <laughs> like oh i didn't know that was your show and of course it was the witchcraft one the one i'm mm. least proud no i'm kidding but the one that's like oh hex files can get away with like yeah but like the other one's like hardcore it's like let's talk about the devil um yeah. and why he's your friend right and why you should work with him and why he's sexy right um, <laughs> and, but, um, did he mention me <laughs> and it's like oh yeah i have was, some was, friends that listen to podcasts and it's like yeah they checked it out and um yeah it was pretty cool and uh i listened to a couple episodes and yeah and i'm like yeah that's that's me so go ahead and listen to all of those and know more about me than I know about any of all of you. <laughs> um, 
but no, it's 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 this weird balance of like you kind of want pe- you want to talk about it to certain people and other people you're like pod- podcast what's what's that is that not is that radio is that am like, what no, is that but you're wrong. <laughs> that's not, that wasn't my that's that's someone else I don't know right you mean somebody's doppelganger me <laughs> <laughs> she sounds just like me that is so weird yeah. it's kind of stuck up <laughs> don't like uh-huh. it ah. Who believes in the ghosts anyway? Really? Um, <laughs> and then these and then these people are like, actually, there was something in my house the other night. Like, and then they're, you know, everybody wants to talk about ghosts and shit till they have one. And then they're like, uh-huh. you say you hunt ghosts? <laughs> like, um, <laughs> no, actually, I never said that. Why? Did HR come to you? <laughs> <laughs> Because we're in North Carolina, like, I don't know that you can get fired for being a paranormal investigator, but yes, you can. Oh, you can get fired yeah. for anything. North Carolina is a will to work state. Oh, 100%. They can fire you at any point. They'll be like, well, we can't say we're firing him for record ghosts and, and witches and shit like this, but um, he was at a dress code or something. I don't know. Get rid of him. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Turns out the way that the business is going... Yeah. yeah yeah and we're both in healthcare so um i mean obviously there's a bunch of weirdos in healthcare but you we can't... have to be weird to be in healthcare <laughs> i mean it's it's less weird than people who want to pray over somebody to, to for them to get better i mean we're... Like... yeah we um we uh what was that one church we went to the chapel of rest chapel of rest in happy yeah. valley yes um and that was like we we're all up in that shit and like oh god um i said i don't know that i've been in a church in i don't know how long but there was a lizard in there um hornets. and there was hornets so i feel like the devil is in there i don't know when you said chapel of rest i envisioned a tub of spreadable butter oh. <laughs> like that's like 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 um um like that land of lake stuff or whatever like um and- the country crock like the yeah yeah and, and with a chapel of rest you know there's a barn on the cover or not the cover but the the, the tub right um in happy valley is that what it's called yeah it's in happy valley it's so weird you know how when you go to disney world or disneyland i don't know which one it is and everything is so obvious like it's physically real it's really there in front of you but it's not quite real like there's something just a little bit off about it that's how Uh chapel of rest is like they have a long haunted history it's very much known for their paranormal side and it's this little chapel little white chapel tucked back into a nook of the hills and the doors are unlocked all of the time. There's no real staff. Nobody's there. You can just go whenever you want. There are cameras. But all of anything that's real about that place has been methodically and militantly erased. Well, oh. okay. So there's like, they use it. They rent it out for like occasions, like um, I guess weddings and shit like this. And, and the- jamborees. The graveyard's very like uh it's a graveyard, right? When it's a church. Or is that a yes, church? Yeah. When it's beside a yes. um but then there were like a headstone like over the side and for like they've I don't been know. tossed over the rock wall. I think but we also debunked the preacher hanging himself. We debunked that because we had a listener uh who found the Shout story. Shout out Heather. Shout out Heather. Um and yeah, so it, it's fun to go to places like that because like I mean some of these roads you drive down like when we looked for um i almost said black shuck it's the uh demon dog um i mean there's just little In like valley cruises yeah it's like don't trespass you'll get shot i'm sure there's plenty around uh where you're from like those little yeah haunts. oh we've got we've got some great like country churches that are either abandoned and falling down or um um my 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 little town where I'm from has a couple of really old kind of spooky looking ones um, from the outside. I've never been on the inside of them. There was a church, and uh, we ba- I loosely based an episode off of this. There was a church in my hometown 
that left the doors open all night so anyone can come in and pray. Fools. You know, whatever. To so we used to devil. go and just hang out. We just went in and hung out, right? Like it was a small town. You got a Waffle House and you got parking lots. So when it rained, we would just go to this church, just like go in there and just hang out. And um, um, so we did a story that takes place in a, um, not completely in, but like a big feature of it is a church after hours, you know, at, at, at dark when everything is like, just a little eerie, a little spooky um, places that you're used to during the day. Like when you went to like a school play and it's dark and, and it just felt, felt off, you know, felt wrong. Yes. That's how this whole episode kind of feels. It's got that cool vibe. Yeah, we'll have to find um, listen. That What's one's called name? Dark and Familiar. It's that's, oh. it's oh, I was going to start that one and then I didn't and we jumped to another one. So we'll have to that's a that's a good one so fun story there's a the, there's a character in there well okay so i'll just tell you about my history a little bit and that'll make a part of that story a, a lot of fun for you <laughs> um my church was fixated on like the revelation in time stuff back in oh, the oh, too. Jesus. okay yeah like the middle nine i don't know how old you guys are but i'm i'm uh, i was born in 82 so i was like in high school uh in the late 90s yeah and... too. same okay cool 85 and 84 yeah so. okay yeah okay so right there yeah <laughs> so like all those left behind books and everything when they were coming out oh my god um so i was terrified of the end times because they they had us watch all those movies and shit oh my god you know, same where, yeah yeah like where where people are tor- like like straight up torture porn shit you know like um and uh um anyway so there's a uh uh i feel so I, I still feel bad about this to this day but like i finally got the nerve to ask this girl out to homecoming um and i was not a cool kid right so like it was just an excuse to like do it and there was a uh, uh full moon that night and the full moon came up and it was very red. And I was convinced that the end times were happening. <laughs> oh my God. And I, I, I panicked and like, I got weird. Like I just got quiet and weird and I was not fun to be around. Um, it was like, looking back, I feel, I feel bad about it, but also just like, it's hilarious that I was so scared of something so but it's also like brainwashing because i remember left behind shit and like you would be so scared and it's like then you get older did you have a rapture plan did you have like oh my god well it's basically if you got left behind like you're fucked like you better remember these books Um, right right and it's like and then you get older and you're like oh my god like of course i believe that shit i was a teenager and you've talked to me about this my whole life but then I kind of grew up and was like, oh yeah, this shit's stupid, but we all still think that like, that's what blows my mind now is I'm like, wait, y'all still on this train? Like y'all still think this shit is really happening. Even though you came from a more, we'll say quote unquote, enlightened portion of the population, you still somehow ended up at Christian school. Well, you know, there's a lot of cults in California, Um, but no, I yeah. just got the good old Southern Baptist, like Christians on Sunday, maybe a little bit on Monday, oh, no. but See, by I Friday, got... we're having a good well, time. What happened was, what happened was when I was growing up, it was like Methodist and it was like Wesleyan and those don't count. Those aren't real denominations. But when you get, when you get to the Baptist shit, that was my, um, my mom married into that and that little podunk town's church was all like a 90 year old up there hellfire preaching about um that was everything was like jesus loves you but we ain't gonna talk about that we're gonna talk about how if there's any it's like these fuckers have gone here they're like 80 and 90 years old they've gone here their entire lives they've heard every sermon they raise their hand at every little word you say i think they're saved but no (laughs) it's still like got him off to like preach about 
hail fire and damnation it's like it get, they love it they fucking love it and it's like yeah that's it's what, like the day that you decide to like dis evangelize your mind will be the best day of your life i think yeah but it's it hard to shed several shit. years for me yeah like there was a, it was a whole process it is you have yeah. to like, oh god yeah unbrainwash yourself you have to like and there's still like what if i'm wrong feelings in the beginning and you're like uh-huh yeah. i don't actually care if i'm wrong because at this point i'd rather take that i'm actually going to hell in all of these scenarios so this is actually better <laughs> for me this is better yeah. for me yeah um, <laughs> But yeah, um, that that's hard here, and to break away from that, and even now, like, like, I mean, I'm not saying that I'm super successful, but you know, I like put myself through school, um, got to where I am, have, you know, had issues, but done well on my own, and had like differences in the family with with things, and you know, it's like my family sees that, but it's like. The one part they like wonder, I think about, and it's like, but why though? I'm not saying that you're wrong and I'm right, but also like, why do you think I like, do you not think I'm fine as I am? You know what I mean? Um, that shows almost a little bit of privilege that I think a lot of people don't get is because we never, a lot of people never get that moment of what if I'm not wrong? Right. A lot of people go their entire lives thinking I'm wrong and I'm going to suffer my consequences, but I'm still wrong. Yeah. And that's a terrible way to live. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, that was most of mine, you know, and yeah, there's some people that still deal with it. So it, it can be rough. It, and yeah, there's a lot of horror stories to come out of that. Um, <laughs> uh, it's almost like you could write a whole podcast. You almost yeah. could. Yeah. Right. But um, it's almost like you could find three other people and do an amazing <laughs> podcast. And, you know, I am fortunate enough that I can actually talk to my family about certain stuff and, you know, have a disagreement, but not be disowned, but like not understood. But, you know, that's not the same for a lot of people around here. And it's just, yeah, you know, it's such a community. When you think of Appalachia as a whole, it's like, I'm fucking on your side, but you get so mad at some of these people where it's like, I'm not your enemy. Like, yeah, they're your enemy. Why are you like licking their boots? Like fucking quit. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. You forget yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you forget your roots. Right. Most of the thing we like to say boot licker, bootleggers, not boot lickers. Bootleggers. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, <sighs> that kills me. You know, like, it's like when, you know, there was a uh, uh, there was a time during like the depression when bankers would come and like try and repossess a farm. Like the entire town would show up, just like armed to the teeth. Like I fucking dare you. you oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. And and they would like you know scooch on out of town. And now it's like, well, we better give them their tax cuts. And if we do, maybe they'll get new vending machines in the break room this year. Right. I don't know. They're right. stealing maybe away. Maybe I'll get a for yeah. half a million dollars instead of three quarters of a million dollars. I know, right? Yeah. It's the ones that's like, oh, you're wearing your mask. You're such a sheep to the government. And then it's like, well, they wouldn't have got shot if they listened to the police officer. <laughs> like, you can't be yeah. both. Yes. You can't, can. you can't be on both sides. But yeah. um, I mean, you can, but you can't <laughs> do that and still be right ish. Right. Because nobody's actually right. Yeah. Which, well, we've had a very, like, heavy, which is fine, because that's where we're from. That's what, we, what's what we're doing. Um, we're going to try to have Appod Latcha on uh, in the in the next show. So it's nice to, to talk yeah. to all of you. Oh, that's where we found you guys. Appod um, Latcha. Yeah. yeah, Bridget was on Appod Latcha. Oh. Okay, okay, I can't say that fucking name either. I, I want to say Appod Latcha. I can't, it's I can't hard. make it's it hard. work. There's a, there's an entire, we have a blooper reel that came out and like, there's a big chunk of it that was just me trying to talk about Bridget's appearance. On the show. <laughs> and finally, I was just like, Palacha. A Palacha. I was like, you can find Apod, 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 you can find them at. Like, right. As long as you don't uh, say Appalachia. Uh, I don't. I don't. <laughs> don't. That's how you know where somebody's from real fucking quick. Yeah. Yeah. Did you learn about this in a book or did you learn about this in your life? I know we were so excited when we were watching Finding Bigfoot. No, not Finding Bigfoot. What's the one? Expedition Bigfoot? Um, the more entertaining one. And 
they were like, oh, we're going to be in a Apple. I can't even say it wrong. Appalachia. <laughs> and we're like, oh, God, I love that you're here and looking for Appalachian Bigfoots, but it's killing me. You're killing me. Every yeah. time. You're going to have to go way up <laughs> past Pennsylvania to find him because he's not here. <laughs> He ain't down here. No, that's a wood booger down we here. We ain't got him here. Yeah, but um, no, we'll have to talk to them. And that's like we're just you know going through all the uh, Appalachian podcasts. Um, but I mean, you know, like with old gods and you guys and 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 them, it's like seeing these people do well and like the interest, even with people we um, talk to online that are fans of ours that don't live from here saying like oh my god I've always wanted to go there I've always wanted to do this and it's like it's cool but at the same time where it's like (laughs) man I feel like I want to take all of the people who have recently developed this enamorment with Appalachian culture and be like okay let's go see it let's drive through the Cherokee Indian Reservation let's go look at the casino because you're going to have to go through 45 miles of absolute destitute poverty. That's going to make you feel real uncomfortable. And then I'll, Yes. Then go put yeah. all of your dollars into the machine. So yeah, it's rough, especially when you see like, like, I don't even understand how this like little trailer is still standing, but they've got like a hundred Trump flags. It's like, yeah that's not well they're holding it up you know that's, yeah well, yeah they're holding it up it's low and bearing like, those are those are low bearing flagpoles yes um, <laughs> but it's like they th- are load bearing the wrong <laughs> fucking load you yeah you go through the right like you know not the fancy highways but you go the right way and it's like some of the poorest shit you've ever seen and you're like look at that abandoned oh no somebody's living there yeah somebody's living in yeah. that trailer from a tractor trailer their step is a five gallon bucket and they're burning coal inside their house uh-huh yeah and yeah there's no you know so it's like it's but a- go ahead and, and pull that slot go ahead and do that <laughs> <laughs> well yeah that's there's so much here that's like well I mean, that's it's great. dark yeah, it's great. It got dark. It always gets dark when we talk about Appalachia because there's so much good, but you can't just cover it up. You know what I mean? Like you have to, yeah. like this is a region that's famously been, you know, shit upon and taken advantage of. Exploited to the absolute yes. marrow of its soul. And just run into the ground. I mean, to the fact that like, there's some stuff like even today that you look at and you think, oh fuck, I didn't even realize that. And now I know like what it spawned from. Um, and you know, we're learning like whether it's like watching a television show or something and you're like, oh yeah. And then you get real pissed off and you're like, yeah, let's start like this whole like Appalachian revolution. And then half the people are like, nah, we're good. Probably more than half. Yeah. It's like, no, you just from the city or you, you, you're talking crazy. That's why I'm real happy to sound like this. Right. <laughs> and I mean, it's like, you know, it's a very resourceful people and a very like proud and strong people. And it's just, it's hard to see some of that come through here too. Like that, that brainwashing shit. And I mean, of course the evangelicalism has always been there. Um, and you can't remove that from it, but like this yeah. right wing bullshit and all this stuff with like being uh, subservient to a police state where it's like jesus christ like i have gotta tell you like not to not to you know shamelessly plug it but you guys it sounds like you guys would love olive hill like it takes place in i mean we're gonna uh, listen well yeah yeah, (laughs) do plug olive hill right we'll have them on (laughs) can i give you (laughs) yeah we'll have them on um um Oh yeah, okay, so I can give you the pitch that we used for it. Um, it's the summer of 2001 between uh, senior year of high school and freshman year of college. I hate it. Two girls. Stop looking at me. <laughs> two girls on opposite sides of town in the dead of night, both stop what they're doing, walk into the forest, and are never seen again. Oh, fuck. They're so lucky. <laughs> well, first off, like, how do you do it? How do I, how do I do that? Um, right. So now, uh, is there an instruction day, guy? A journalist who is also from that town is going back home to investigate that summer. So, dude, I love the way I that sounds. I hate it. 
I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, we did the whole missing people thing. Like that shit pr- probably freaks me out more than anything. It's like alien abductions. That's cool. Um, Bigfoot, Bigfoot ate you. That's cool. Ghosts, chupacabras, yeah. Mothman, all this shit. But when you start talking about like people that disappear under weird like like that shit freaks me out but also like how can i get in on that right like how much does it cost <laughs> is there a I'm, package yeah right. uh is it a timeshare can we get a family plan <laughs> <laughs> but no we'll have to check out olive hill because that sounds amazing um but we appreciate you coming on ian and talking about yes. your podcast thank you so yeah, much yeah i appreciate you guys and it's, having us. it's a new exciting um it's a new exciting thing to listen to because I don't, my library is full, my Apple podcast library is full of things that I have to get through. And sometimes you need a, like a good, like fiction break from talking, talk things. Well, we have a weird um, obsession with productivity, I think, like this whole like capitalism culture where everything has to mean something, it has to equal something. And sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it equals nothing. Sometimes it equals. This is very great. Yeah, it just equals a good time. Right, and this is like the perfect podcast to start because it's good, it's scary, and it's unsettling, and it's well done. So uh, if you would tell all of our listener where to find... Um, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> if you would repeat that back to me, please. <laughs> um, if you'll, if you'll, we'll post these later in the show notes, but uh, if you'll tell us where to find you guys and um, all that good stuff. Yeah, we're on uh, anywhere you listen to podcasts. It's going to be um, 13, uh, all spelled out, not the numbers. Yeah, don't look, don't um, go into iTunes and start plugging in one and three. You're not going to find anything. Yeah, you won't find, well, you'll probably find a ton of stuff, but it won't be us. Right. Um, I didn't do that. You'll find it uh, 13, all spelled out, anywhere you listen to podcasts. Um, we're on all the social media stuff, um, either pod 13 or 13 pod, depending on whether or not it was taken. Exactly. Um, and the uh, website is 13podcast.com. Well, that sounds good. Uh, do you do you have any of your personal stuff you want to plug or you're good? You're an introvert. I'm good. You're I'm good. good on, yeah, exactly. Okay. Introvert. I like give you a chance. My, I put my I put my soul into the show. You can find it there. I don't, um, I don't want, um, I don't want the rest of the crew getting like, like, you know, they didn't come on and talk to us. So if we can give you a side hustle, but no, that's good too. You don't need yeah, all the- no. they, these- they can, they can plug their stuff on their, on their appearances. Yeah. We don't need these <laughs> tens of people coming to your personal Facebook and that's right. <laughs> um, but no, like we, we do have, we have a great team. Like, um, Brooke, Liz and Bridget are the, are absolute best people to work with i love them to death we've become very very close friends and um i wouldn't really want to i wouldn't want to create without them and yeah they're, yeah, they're amazing that. if you I'm ever need so a, glad you found your people, people. if you yeah. have a voice actor to come on that sounds like she's from lincolnton north carolina we got we know somebody i, okay. might, know. <laughs> I might know her just you might know her i might know her don't you and uh, you and Bridget can do an episode together. You can, um, because like I mean, y'all do sound pretty close. <laughs> I'll take so, it. a compliment. It is a compliment. Yeah, it is. That is a compliment. You know, y'all could be in an episode to together. Or like, oh my god, I love Tamara's accent. I love her voice and all this and that. And it's like, you know, who says that about me? Nobody. <laughs> If y'all ever heard me talk to my family after I've been with them for a couple of hours, you would be like, does she know English at all? <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that if you ever get really tired of doing what you do, that you should do uh, meditations. You should do like guided meditations where it'd be like, yeah, go into your brain. What is the scariest thing you can find? We'll look at it. Stay with it. Have a good talk with it. <laughs> Ooh, you would do it so okay. much better. you'd do it so much better <laughs> like um those shadow work guided meditations where you uh, end your meditation you're like yeah. nope 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 <laughs> and here we're gonna find a happy little demon yeah this That's is it. That sounds great. <laughs> that you absolutely hate let's take a look at that 
a meditation podcast for your when you have free time, you know. <laughs> Take it from me, two podcasts, easy. It's easy, so easy. Oh, so easy peasy, right? Yeah. And then add a whole job and a whole like family career. Blech. Yeah. Blech. I was like, you know, this zero whole, of 10 recommend. I was like, this whole once a yeah. month thing sounds pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, but it involves a team. It's just me. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't. Weekly would be really hard. <laughs> I know. I mean, you would yeah. sacrifice so much, even bi weekly. Oh. I mean, look at us. Yeah. Oh. Right. Um, but no, we appreciate your time and we appreciate um, you coming on and telling us about your amazing podcast and um, your bourbons, your delicious bourbons. Um, your history, your story, your process. Yes. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me.